Diabolical Tales. Starring Jack Ferguson and another exciting story of dangerous intrigue, fantastic adventure, and sinister circumstance. Diabolical Tales. incidents in the story you are about to hear are based on the actual experiences and authentic records of the government man known only as Special Agent X-132, who for many years has investigated the otherwise unexplainable. Here is our star, Jack Ferguson, as X-132. My name is not important, but you can call me Special Agent X-132, or just X-132. I work on an above top secret project called the Enigma Files. And this is my story. In a moment, listen for Jack Ferguson as X-132, Government Man. But first, a word from our sponsor. Are you looking for the latest in hi-fi records? Then come on down to Waiting Room Records for the most recent hits by today's chart toppers, including Duke Ellington, Charlie Parker, Cannonball Adderley, Shorty Rogers, and Dizzy Gillespie. At Waiting Room, you'll find a marvelous collection of 78s, 45s, and even a growing number of the new long-playing 12-inch records. Waiting Room Records is at 113 West North Street in beautiful Uptown Normal, Illinois. So when you're in Normal, visit Waiting Room Records. And don't forget to ask for Babs. That's me! And now, Diabolical Tales. This above top secret report from the Enigma Files is marked Operation Paperclip. This place is swarming with crowds and commies. Are you sure we're in the right place, X-132? Pretty sure, X-13. That's the Nazi Ministry of Science over there. But what's left of it? May 2nd, 1945, Berlin. I was there with my partner, Special Agent X-13 of the OSS, as part of the top secret Operation Paperclip. Our goal was to get as many Nazi scientists alive as we could before the Russians got them. The Russians had already entered the city from the east, while the American and British forces were still fighting their way through the Nazi front miles to the west. Our boss, General Burton, made sure we had a team of U.S. Army soldiers escorting us. I had mixed feelings about the mission, but it still had to be accomplished. We better get out of here. Those Russian commies beat us to it. Not yet, soldier. We've got orders to locate and capture every Nazi scientist left alive, and I intend to do it. It's a measure of national defense. But, sir, that place is deserted. Looks like no one's been there for weeks. Just then, I spotted a truck with a Nazi insignia on it pull up to the bombed-out Ministry of Science building. A bunch of guys in white coats jumped out and headed into the building. What do you think, X-132? Looks like Nazi scientists. Let's get them. Oh, no! Operation Paperclip, my foot! As our small group snuck up toward the Ministry of Science, we found the Nazis had left behind one guard at the door. So we moved around behind him. The lead American GI on our team knocked him out. Uh, these crowds, the master race? <laughs> my foot. All right, soldier, that's enough about your foot. But, you know, good job nonetheless. Keep guard out here with the rest of the team. Special Agent X-132 and I are gonna go in. If we're not back within two or three hours, abort the mission and get out of here. Aw, oh, jeez. I mean, yes, sir. X-13 and I ran into the building with our standard issue sidearms drawn and ready for action. We ran down a dark hallway that opened up into a huge entry chamber with a domed ceiling that had been hit by artillery, leaving open a third of the dome to an empty sky. 
One hundred feet beneath the dome, there were many staircases leading further down into the complex. And that's when we saw them. X-132, look! Nazi scientists! There was a whole cadre of these white-coated clowns carrying boxes of who knows what up these stairs. We raised our guns toward them and started making our way closer. Freeze! American forces! And nothing. It's like they couldn't hear us or they're just ignoring us. So we moved closer, hoping to cut them off at the top of the staircase. I said freeze, Nazis! Hey, Nazis, freeze! And still nothing. I was growing impatient, so I took a quick aim and I... My shots hit one of the Nazi scientists, who dropped dead and dropped his box of papers that spilled out all over the place. It made a big mess. I was kind of embarrassed. The group of scientists around him finally looked at us, then turned around and ran back down the stairs. I was ready to start firing again when X-13 suddenly slapped my gun down. No! Our mission is to capture them, not kill them! <sighs> now we gotta tell General Burton that we shot a scientist. He couldn't speak English anyway. Would have been very little help to us there. Yeah, and he had a gun. And, and he killed some kid. Okay, let's move. We then made our way down the stairs after the scientists, which led into a basement level of dark, dimly lit tunnels. We could hear some activity up ahead of us. We had come across a fortified bunker full of at least two dozen Nazi white coats. They were busy burning documents in a couple of barrels, smashing electronics, generally covering their tracks. Once again, they didn't seem to pay us any mind as we cautiously wandered into the room with guns raised. Freeze! American forces! You're all under arrest. Stop what you're doing and raise your hands. About half of them did it instantly. The other half, not fluent in English, but quick on observation, were only a few seconds behind. We had captured the whole lot of them. We've captured the whole lot of them, X-132. Now, who speaks English? One white coat, a tall, gaunt man in his thirties, stepped forward. You are Americans, yeah? Red, white, and blue blood, buddy. You better believe it. And you are? I am Dr. Werner von Braun. Holy Toledo, the smartest man in Germany. <laughs> da, da, second only to mein Führer, Heil Hitler! <laughs> Your Führer is dead, Doctor. <laughs> da, this is what we want you to think. And who are you? My name is Special Agent X-13 of the U.S. Office of Strategic Services. And as part of Operation Paperclip, I am authorized to escort, or forcibly capture, each one of you back to the American front lines. And then, another artillery shell hit the building above, showering all of us in the bunker in dust as the walls shook. X-13 and I never wavered with our guns, and no one moved. Until... The second one did us in. Both X-13 and I were knocked to the ground as part of the ceiling collapsed in on the bunker, and the room went dark with smoke. I couldn't see nor hear anything. Except... I don't know if I've told you about her. Her name is Diane Davis. She's my girl back home. And she's waiting for me once I got back from this crazy war. She was always waiting for me, if you know what I mean. I've loved her since long before I kissed her for the first time in my high school prom. And I was too afraid to ever tell her the words, I love you, even though it was true. Sure, the guys back home say that now she gets around, smokes those reefer cigarettes, and hangs around Negroes and homosexuals. But that didn't mean I didn't love her. She had dropped out of college and was working on a novel back in the States now. And she was all I could think about every time my life was in danger. Next time, I'd tell her how much I love her. I'd make her my wife when I got home. And I'd... The Russians are coming! The Russians are coming! 
It took me several minutes to regain my senses. And the next thing I saw was Dr. Von Braun extending his hand to me. Come, hurry! The Russians are coming! Von Braun helps me up, and then I started looking around for X-13. I found him buried under a pile of debris, with a support beam having crushed his right leg. He was out cold. We lifted the beam and pulled him out just as he started to come to. Are you alright, X-13? Oh, and a little pain here. That was a close one. A few inches to the right and I would have been a goner. That leg isn't looking so good, X-13. I've been in more spots. Like with the Ottoman Turks in 1918. I'll manage X-132. We must go now! Hurry! We picked up X-13 and carried his weight between us, following other white coats down another dark corridor. After a couple of twists and down two more flights of stairs, the passage opened up into an incredibly massive underground hangar. Good God! It's like... Agartha! What's that again? Tibet. The underground kingdom. Dr. Ernst Schaefer's investigation of Agartha from... Six years ago. Ah, Dr. Schaefer, he's right over there. X-13 and I looked at each other. We'd finally caught up to Dr. Ernst Schaefer. We'll be back with Special Agent X-132 in Diabolical Tales after a word from our sponsor. My husband never liked my coffee. Ugh. How can someone so beautiful make such terrible coffee? And then I tried a new brand, Caffeinol Brand Coffee. It's special blended, vacuum-packed, and valley-grown for superior flavor. Now let's give it a test on my picky husband. What's this? Motor oil? It's Caffeinol, sweetie. Give it a try. Hey, that's got a kick. Wow, this is like motor oil. I'm ready to take on the world. What a great wife. Caffeinol Brand Coffee. It's not motor oil, but it'll get your engine running. And don't forget to try the new Lumberjack Roast. And now we're back with Jack Ferguson as G-Man Special Agent X-132 in Diabolical Tales, The Enigma Files. There we were, my mentor, Special Agent X-13, and me in a secret Nazi hangar under Berlin, May 1945. We had chased some Nazi scientists down into this bunker when Soviet artillery hit, severely wounding X-13's leg. We were led by Dr. Werner von Braun into this secret underground base in an attempt to stay ahead of the Russians, who were pouring through Berlin above. The hangar was home to at least a dozen strange saucer-shaped craft that carried the swastika on them. There was a stockpile of V-2 rockets lining in one entire wall, and a supercomputer took up the other half of the wall. It was like every scientific secret that Hitler and his boys were working on was stored right here. Ah, Dr. Schaefer, he's right over there. And as Dr. Von Braun just pointed out, this base also included Dr. Ernst Schaefer. He was a German zoologist who led a Nazi expedition to Tibet in 1939 in search of a legendary, ancient, underground kingdom called Agartha. And right now, he was loading reams of paperwork into one of these strange, saucer-shaped doohickeys. Dr. Ernst Schaefer, what are these flying discs, Doctor? And are these the Foo Fighters? You Nazis are flying these strange airships that our bomber crews keep reporting in about? How did you do this? Superior German science combined with advanced technology from the fourth planet of the star Zeta Reticuli. But that Agent X-13 is neither here nor there. And now we finally get to face off against this guy, Dr. Ernst Schaefer member of the Nazi Ancestral Heritage Society, aimed to prove Aryan superiority in ancient times. Yeah, that's the kind of fella he was. Dr. Ernst Schaefer, I presume. I've been trailing you a long time. Da, over six years you have been searching for me, da? Something like that. I could tell you. 
But then I'd have to kill you. You. You are not a good spy, Agent X-13. Everybody knows who you are. <laughs> so, what do you want, Agent X-13? We've been to Tibet, Dr. Schaefer. We know about it, Arthur. You? You have been to the tunnel? The tunnel to Agatha? Yes, Dr. Schaefer. We've been to the tunnel. Why don't you get your research files and come with us to the United States of America? You have been to Agatha? Are they allied with you, Americans? Is that how you've defeated our great plan? And then another bomb hit. And this was a big one. I looked up and saw the entire ceiling of the hangar suddenly collapse, and sunlight beamed in. What was left crashed on top of the fleet of saucers and the supercomputer. In the mayhem that ensued, I saw one of the V-2 rockets start to topple over, but then I felt myself being pushed forward. X-13 was pushing Dr. Von Braun, Dr. Schaefer, and all of us into a saucer. The next thing I knew, Dr. Schaefer was sitting at the controls when a concussion wave suddenly hit us. The entire place just got a whole lot hotter. That's when we closed the saucer's back door and we started to lift off. And then we were lifting off out of the hangar, through the gaping hole in the ceiling as explosions from the top of V-2 rockets just went off underneath us, consuming the entire hangar in flames. We were in the sky, suddenly looking down on a whole lot of surprised Soviet troops. They raised their machine guns and opened fire on the saucer. Don't worry! This superior machine is bulletproof! And that's when we saw the Russian tank with its turret turning toward us. We tried to gain altitude, but the tank fired. We took a hit. The saucer's back door was blown off and we started to go down. Dr. Schaefer's research papers just started blowing out the back door into the open sky. The winds were so heavy that X-13, who was closest to the back, started grabbing at things to keep him from falling out. I struggled to reach him, but we were crammed in with boxes that I couldn't get around. No! X-13, hold on! I'm trying! As I tried to push through the boxes, X-13 slipped and was sucked out the back door. But he managed to grab onto the door frame with his fingertips and was slipping further. And then he was gone. The wind swept out the back just as I got over the boxes. I could have helped him. No! I could see X-13 fall several hundred feet down, landing right into the middle of the Russian soldiers who seemed to descend on him instantly. As we flew away, I could see them surround him, with his clothing being shredded and... They're eating him! Those insidious commie Russian bastards! Dr. Schaefer continued to pilot the craft into a somewhat controlled descent, but he lost control just before we reached the ground. Ah! We landed just on the outskirts of Berlin. The impact had severely wounded Dr. Schaefer, who was slumped over the pilot's seat of the saucer. Don't align your country with an advanced power as we did. It has been our undoing, and it will be yours. And with that, Dr. Schaefer died. Dr. Von Braun and I climbed out of the saucer wreckage to see our American Army team approaching us. Holy crap! What is that thing? X-132, General Burton called in and wants to know what happened! I've got Dr. Werner Von Braun here, and all this research material needs to be collected, including the flying disc. Dr. Schaefer... he didn't make it. And X-13... is... dead. Those Russian communists ate him. And that was how I lost my mentor, X-13. But we learned a lot from that mission, and we confiscated tons of research from Dr. Schaefer's investigations of the men from within the Earth. But we still didn't know what we were up against. After the war, I continued working for General Burton first with the OSS and later with the Special Projects Division of the United States Army. 
eventually finding my way onto investigations involving the alleged UFO sightings that started up in 1947. <laughs> but wait, I'm getting ahead of myself. Gotta hit the can and get a fresh cup of Joe. This is Jack Ferguson. Some of the stories we bring you are so strange and fantastic that it's hard to believe that it really happened. For obvious reasons, some of the names, dates, and localities have been changed. But our stories are based on the real-life experiences of Special Agent X-132, G-Man. And they did happen here. We hope you'll join us again next time for another adventure. Until then, remember folks, the men from within the Earth are among us. Tales Radio Hour starred Jack Ferguson, Christian Wheeler, Steve DeMonico, Ken Wester, Don Garrett, Luna Alcorn, Brianna McDowell, Kyle Stroud, Brandon Kane, and Ryan Van Kay as Dr. Ernst Schaefer. The original score was by Troy Sterling Neese. The mix was by Dan Jeremy Brooks of Apocalypse Cow Studios. It was written by Brandon Kane and produced by Christian Wheeler, Troy Sterling Neese, Don Guerin, and Dan Jeremy Brooks. The Diabolical Tales Radio Hour is presented by Cosmic Control Productions.